The next item is item number nine, approval of City Commission Policy 103, reimbursement and recovery of attorney fees and cost in ethics complaint cases. And the City Attorney will handle this item. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Manager. Mayor and Commissioners, at your November 30th retreat, you asked us to bring back to you a policy for the, that provides for the payment and a reimbursement of attorney's fees in ethics complaints, and that's what uh, this item addresses. If I could, let me go through a little bit of a who, what, when, where, because it may be helpful to, to frame the issues for you. Uh, the first item is who does this apply to? You've heard a lot of conversation about commissioners, but it applies to all of our employees because the ethics code applies to all employees from the lowest level to the, to the very top. So it's the same policy that would be used to deal with attorney's fees no matter who the uh, recipient of the complaint is. <clears throat> the second question is what does it apply to? And this policy per your request only deals with ethics. Okay. It does not deal with civil complaints. We have a uh, indemnity resolution uh, that deals with that that we probably need to bring back and uh, <clears throat> update for you, but we have that in place does not deal with criminal processes. Fortunately, we've never dealt with those. We've never ever paid a penny in any criminal process, and in my view, we never would. If somebody is indicted, they, they'll get their own defense attorney and they deal with that, uh, that issue. If you want a policy brought back on that, we can do that, but I really wouldn't recommend you confuse this policy, which is, is relatively narrow and straightforward. The, uh, the next issue is what's the order of magnitude of the, the dollars we're talking about here. And, and um, honestly, some time back, we looked back over the last 10 years at what we had paid, and it was um, on average less than $3,000 a year. Some years it was much more, some years it was zero. So we're not, at least historically, talking about large uh, large amounts of money. Really, if you look at the last 10 years, I think we only had two complainants, two people that filed ethics complaint. In the previous 10 years, it was one or one or two. There may be multiple complaints filed by the same complainant, but, but the number of citizens actually filing complaints are like one and two. And, and then the last explanatory, uh, explanatory issue is the question was raised on the reimbursement provision uh, where complaints are dismissed and they're filed with malicious intent. <clears throat> that language, that standard that's in there is right out of the Florida statutes. That's what's provided for now in the, in the Florida statutes. And um, so with that, the, uh, essentially what the policy does is uh, codify what's been the existing practice. Uh, it's consistent uh, with the common law right of, right of reimbursement and indemnity. It uh, does put some defini definition in, which we believe is, is helpful. It lays out the process that we will deal with uh, when complaints are pending, and that is we would pay uh, reasonable fees in a complaint up until a finding of probable cause. Uh, if probable cause is found, we would say to the employee, uh, we won't pay anymore. You have to pay your own expenses. If at the end of that process you prevail as defined, you're successful, then you can file this reimbursement request. If the fees are reasonable and you're entitled to them, we'll, we'll pay them. Mm -hmm. If you're found to have violated the ethics code, you have to pay the fees you owe and any the city has paid. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really it. Well, Jim, won't you have to change 10304 a little bit? Yes, there is one, and actually Mr. Baines brought this up. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to strike without a finding of guilt, because that, that doesn't need to be in there. He's correct. That deals with the criminal process. And, and frankly, that was in there from a policy we were working from that, that did have some criminal language in it. Right. So with that, uh, we were Commissioners? Well, just a, Miller. Just a couple of things. Um, I, th I thought it was ironic that I heard a discussion in the speakers to be heard that we might actually be sued for our efforts to develop a policy on ethics. That was interesting. Um, 
and that we should put together a group to study the problem because to me I've been trying to figure out since I came here exactly what the problem was given the fact that we have never had isn't that my am I clear on that that we've never had any commissioner ever convicted of an ethics violation so right. studying the problem I'm not sure what the problem is but we have been studying it. I wanted to make sure that that was clear. We have been studying this. What I heard from the public for a long time, well, at first, at first of this year and this 2011, was that they wanted attention to ethics. And so we went forward at our retreat and said, please go forward and address an ethics policy. So having done that, thank you very much. I appreciate, for, I appreciate your putting an ethics policy in front of us for our consideration. And as soon as that was done, all of a sudden we aren't addressing criminal a situation, which I hadn't really heard of before this week, frankly. Um, to me, that's a completely different situation. You get to an ethics violation by virtue of someone not liking the way you're dressed. You get to a criminal charge by a process that is well defined it is and somebody has to find some proof that you may have committed a crime so those are two different things. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a policy <coughs> where the Commission as to how the Commission would act in a situation like that, but to me it is completely different and apart from this situation largely based on those processes that bring you to the point. Because this is basically the new politic. The new politic is to just throw darts at people and then just hope something will stick. And, you know, for if you really want to discourage people from running for office, that is a great way to do it. I mean, why put yourself out here, bring your time and talent to the table when any, and, and then you are supposed to be picking up your own legal fees in case someone is in a bad sort on one day. So I'm glad we're getting to the point where this is written down. I think we've been through every, I've discussed with the attorney's office everything that I had a question about. Um, so I'm supportive of this and I will move this item. Second. Second? You second? Yeah. Got a motion to second Commissioner Mustard. Well, I have a few suggestions on this or, or kind of, uh, statements or whatever. Let me just kind of run through these real quick. Um, and some have been in responses to, to what people have, you know, suggested or, uh, um, and some are rejecting those suggestions. So um, the, the one thing I, I think we probably do need, uh, or I'd suggest we ask the city attorney to develop something to, that deals with criminal situations. We haven't had to deal with that before. We might in the future. Um, you know, I think it makes sense to have thought through what exactly the policy will be if we were, you know, to ever get to that point. So I, I'd, I'd suggest that we do that. Um, the attorney fee amount, uh, I will tell you as an attorney, um, I, I wouldn't do anything for $175 an hour and don't. Uh, so I, I think that, that what we've got is reasonable on that. I, I, uh, so I, I don't, you know, have any problem with that. Um, the, um, I would change the part about the city attorney deciding what the reimbursement is if there's multiple counts and some get dropped. I think that's a decision that needs to be made up here and not at the, not at the city attorney level. Um, the, um, and the part about the city attorney amending the policy, I missed that in the agreement, but I, I think that's probably something we should do here unless, you know, Jim, you may have. No, that all our policies were supposed to have somebody responsible to maintain the policy okay. and update it as it needs, and what we can fix that. What we mean is, as a statutory references, for example, change, we okay. need to bring that back. Okay, to Commissioner. Um, well, I'll, I'll ditto the um, amendments that uh, Commissioner Mushin just um, just made. Uh, I would add uh, two things to it. One. Um, with regard to whether or not legal fees reach a certain amount, notifying the commission of that, I think it's fair. And I don't know what the number is. I, I really would trust your advice on whether that number is 5,000 or, you know, 10,000. Well, actually, 5,000 is probably closer to where I am um, than anything. But I think it would be helpful to bring that then to the public uh, attention, at least the city commission attention in, in a public meeting. Um, the, I also saw that the county and their policy 
makes it public once legal counsel has been obtained. Uh, and I also think that that's fair to notify the city commission in a public meeting once legal counsel uh, has been uh, has been obtained. Um, I want to, you know, ditto Commissioner Miller's comment about um, creating sort of unnecessary barriers for people who are serving in public office. And I think most people who come to this work do it out of a genuine desire to want to serve the public. And occasionally you do find people who take advantage of the system, but we shouldn't subject those folks to having to, you know, pay legal fees for, you know, the findings that don't, I mean, accusations that don't re, re, uh, result in findings. Um, in our time up here, I think all of us have had, well, maybe not you, uh, Commissioner Miller, because you came along a little later, but have had <clears throat> some violation filed against us, and not one of us have been found guilty. Um, not even not close guilty. to being violation of uh, the, violation of, of the ethics code. Of the ethics code, not a guilt, guilty finding. We, I haven't had a finding against me with regard to <laughs> ethics, and I don't believe anyone else up here um, has. And so, um, I think we—that's that, all the public expects that we're going to be reasonable, that we're not going to waste their money, that we'll be transparent and open about it. Uh, and I think that this policy does that. So, those would be the suggestions I make. Commissioner Ziffer. Yeah, um, Jim, would you explain, because I think it, it has some bearing on this commission making a decision on 103.08, in the event that the circumstances of the payment require budgetary appropriation by the city commission, essentially that means w whatever your recommendation is, it has to come to us to approve payment, does it not? No. Uh, only if we need to have the commission appropriate some money. Uh, traditionally, as I indicated, the amounts uh, have been relatively small. We've just paid them out of the city attorney's uh, professional services budget as sure. we would other uh, professional services contracts. Um, it, it would be my preference that um, the vote on payment would come before this commission. And, and the only reason why, and, and I haven't talked about it at all, but I, I had a, a complaint filed against me in March. It was resolved about a week and a half ago. It was dismissed. There were attorney's fees that um, this city, excuse me, the taxpayers will have to pay as a result of that. And I think the taxpayers need to know that sometimes complaints are filed and they do cost them money and they are dismissed. And I think that's important for not only us to vote on the payments of those, but I think it's important for the taxpayers to know that. Um, you said on the average about $3,000 has been spent over the last 10 or 15, 20 years. Per year. Yep. Considering that, that there have been several filed this year, my guess is that goes up. And True. my guess is in the end, most of them will be, if not all, will be dismissed. It's important for the taxpayers to know that. Um, so my preference would be for us to know about them and then also approve those dollar amounts based upon your recommendations. I don't want to get into this commission deciding on attorney's fees and things of that nature. I'd like a recommendation from you on that. Uh, and those are my comments. Commissioner. Yeah. <clears throat> Just, um, you know, just to exclamation mark this point of the taxpayers having to pick up the bill for someone's either personal grudge or uh, politics or whatever that might be, but you had an ethics violation found against you for a vote that you weren't even on this yes. commission and took, <laughs> and that cost, I know my defense was wow. upwards of $2,000, and I'm thinking, you know, this is an economic incentive for us. I mean, this is an economic advantage, obviously, for the lawyers who get hired, but it is a total sham for the taxpayer to have to spend $2,000 defending you for a vote that you weren't here and didn't take, and the rest of us who took the vote, and there was no right. finding of, um, of an ethical violation whatsoever. And so, I mean, I think this is a reasonable step, but I agree that one reason we should lift this up to the public when these, when these bills have to be paid is so that they know that these things, when they're filed, are not filed without consequence. There are, there are real economic costs for, uh, for the public. And again, if we have done something wrong and it's, it's found that we have done something wrong, we ought to bear the responsibility of that. We ought to have to pay. Agreed. For that, but um, in the history of this commission, when these things have been filed against us, there has been no finding. Yet we have spent tens of thousands, would be my guess, on procuring attorneys to defend us against these um, fr frivolous uh, uh, claims. Yep. 
Commissioner Mush. Well, just real quick on the uh, on the issue of probable cause and these ethics uh, uh, complaints, because there was some suggestion, and, and the Commissioner Katz case has been held up. But we should, you know, that should be the deciding point rather than a decision of a violation. And I, I kind of equate a you know a probable cause finding at the ethics commission sort of like a an a, you know an indictment by the by the by the state uh, attorney and if for whatever reason the state attorney doesn't prosecute the case then why should you know you as the as the commissioner have to front that bill so i i'm comfortable with with the way we've got that and it's my understanding that's the same way that the county commission's uh, ordinance correct. works on that as well any other comments? Uh, Mr. Miller. Well, I think just listening to the discussion, I probably should withdraw my motion and have revisions written into this. And I'm. Why don't, um, why don't we ask the city attorney to take into consideration what you all said and come back with a, something that takes this into consideration that we can review? Mm -hmm. That'd be good. And we can, I don't think that there is any rush to get through this at this point in time. And we could look at it maybe in January. Okay. Kane, and you'll be able to bring back a recommendation on the criminal also. I, I didn't echo that, but I, yes. I think we need something. Sure. Okay. Yeah, well, that I, means. I, I still want to keep it a separate. That's fine. Yes, yes. Well, that means that we're going to continue this item until a further date early next year. There's an understanding? Yes. Yes. I mean, what I'd like to, how I'd like to go forward is to say so you, you essentially made these recommendations of amendments. We'll, we'll change the text, make these amendments we've heard, and bring back that. Yeah, I think I think each the whole issue, if yeah. you will, but to address the issues that you raised. I think yeah. the, the commissioners would like to see them before, before yes. you put right. them in there and everything, right. so they'll know what what we're dealing with. All right, this item will be continued. Next item.